In this video, we're going to take a look at the different render modes available to you here inside your scene view. Now, these are in the second drop-down along the viewport toolbar, uh, starting here with RGB, which is your default value. This, of course, allows you to see all of the RGB colors that make up your textures, and it's probably the mode you'll be using 99.9% .9 of the time. Right. The other ones are very special purpose um, modes for fine-tuning, tweaking, yeah. various aspects of your level. They're kind of like testing purposes, really. Exactly. So if we come down, the next one we have from RGB is alpha. Now, what this does is this gives you access to the alpha information of your various materials and textures. And it can help you to tweak out semi-transparent effects that you may be working with. Right. In our scene, we're not really using any semi-transparent uh Thing. So what we're going to do is take something that isn't transparent, and we're going to adjust its transparency just so we can demonstrate what happens in this render mode. That's right. So here I am in our little campground, and I've selected our tent model. And if I come over into the inspector on the right-hand side of the view, I can click on the color swatch for the main color. And at the very bottom of my sliders, I have the alpha slider. And as I slide that down toward black, you'll see everything kind of starting to fade away. Right, with black being an alpha of 0 and white being an alpha of 1. And here we can see how this view mode or is showing us. That's right. That that uh, view mode is showing us that alpha information. And yeah, I'm so used to thinking zero to one too, because you know I come from Maya. And then you got to remember. Oh wait, we're shifting over to 256 space. Yeah, it, it messes me up because I'm used to the scripting side of stuff. So right. in the script, it's zero to one. But here is zero to 255. And again, you can see how bringing down the alpha makes this fade out toward gray and eventually toward black. Now the next render mode that we have is overdraw mode which at first looks like some sort of interesting kind of heat vision. What this is doing is using a multiplier style effect to, or an additive kind of effect, really, uh, to show you how objects are stacked on top of one another, how many different objects are being rendered at the same time. And the more objects you have rendering on top of one another, the closer toward white you eventually get pushed. Right. It, black being there is no overdraw. If you've got a very dark red, that means there's only one um, polygon or one mesh being drawn. And as you move through brighter and brighter reds into yellows up to the very yellow white, means you've got more and more overdraw. Now, overdraw is simply a mesh that's being drawn in the background with another mesh being drawn over the top of that and more and more all the way up to where your camera is. That's right. And if you think about this in terms of the real world, I mean, most of you probably right now are sitting inside some sort of a room. And imagine if all of the walls of your house and all of the things uh, in between those walls, every single object was a separate thing that had to be drawn from back to front. You'd see like the back wall of your house and then maybe a TV and then maybe the sofa and then another wall and all of those things would start to stack on top of one another. That's exactly what Unity has to do. It's got to draw all of these things. This view mode allows you to visualize how many things are having to be drawn on top of each other whether you can see them as the player or not. Right. And it's an optimization um, tool. Basically you say here the more white you have the more of a problem The hotter you have. this starts to look. Exactly. And, and these are going to point out to you the areas where you have to look at either reducing the uh, um, number of uh, meshes geometry that you have in those areas, looking at occlusion calling to get them out of there, different tricks that you can do to reduce the number of areas that are completely blown out to enhance the performance of your game at runtime. That's right. Now, moving down along our render modes, the last one we have is MIP maps. Now, MIP maps are different levels of resolution for the textures being used in our game. And this view mode allows us to visualize the level of resolution that we're currently looking at for each one of these textures, with red being the lowest resolution and blue being the highest. Now, as we back away from like these trees, you'll notice they eventually turn green again. That's because these are technically no longer trees. These have been converted over to billboards, little flat 2D planes that kind of look like trees. But once we get them within range, you'll see that they're bright red because they have the lowest resolution. And as we get close, they make the shift over to blue at the highest resolution. So it's just a way for you to visualize where the higher texture resolutions are being spent in your level. Generally, I mean, if you want to see the blue appear in key areas and uh, the red appear in the, in the areas that you're not going to be looking at more often, it's just a way for you to, to get an idea of where the sharpness lives. Right. So that is a quick look at all of the render modes available here inside of Unity, which will wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.